Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're gonna talk about is how to receive OSC messages in Juice. So OSC, if you're not aware, stands for Open Sound Control. And it's a basically a protocol where you can basically send messages and commands over a network. And you can send these between two different programming languages, such as Max MSP and C++, or you can send them between an app that supports OSC, such as Touch OSC and Max and, and Max MSP, and you're sending these over, over a network. So what I'm going to show you is the very, very basic way of how to receive these messages in Juice. So what I have, I have a little Max MSP patch here. All it does is it just generates a random number every 500 milliseconds. So if I hit this toggle here, you'll see that every half a second, it generates a random number. So below that, I just have this, <coughs> pardon me, I have this object that basically combines this number into a message. So the message that comes out, if I just put a message box here, it'll show you exactly what comes out here. So this is the message that kind of comes out is, let me just change the, sorry about this, keeps on changing the size of the box. I can't grab it and show you it. So, so, so this is the message that it would send out here just say slash juice, which would be the OSC address. And then than the number eight. And then what we're doing is we're using this to basically send it via a port. So the port number that we have is port 6448. And the network that we're using is called localhost, which just means the host that's on this computer. So I'm gonna show you how to receive this in Juice, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and start a new project here. And I'll do new project. I'll just do a audio application and then we'll call this OSC receive and let's see, I will put that here in audio programmer, OSC receiver example. Let me do that. There's actually an OSC receiver example in the uh, juice example folder as well. So, um, so I got some help from that as well. So, um, okay. First thing that you want to do is if you, if you go to modules, you want to make sure that you have the OSC module actually activated. So you just hit this plus sign here, then go to global juice modules path. Then you have this juice OSC. You just click on that just to add it to the active modules and then we'll be ready to go. <clears throat> so here we are in Xcode. Just going to go into the code itself here. So just going to minimize this, save a bit of room. So this, there were a couple things that I found a little bit kind of confusing or took, uh, took me a little bit to wrap my head around. So I thought that a tutorial, a quick tutorial would be helpful for you guys. Um, so, so basically you have the OSC receiver class. Okay. And then you have this listener with OSC address. So, and then we have this message loop callback and real time callback. So first thing that we need to do is that we need to inherit the functionality of the OSC receiver class. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, just going to put a comma here and we're just inheriting this. I'll just make it public. It doesn't matter. Um, so we've got public OSC receiver. Okay. Get my formatting on point here. And then you have this other class that you have to implement uh, listener with OSC class. So if we just click in here, right? And I'll just click in there. So this is an abstract class, uh, which is something that I've just kind of learned about recently. So you can't actually kind of instantiate a abstract class the way that you would with a normal class where you would say, um, where you would just say, OSC receiver listener with OSC address, and then you would call it receiver. You know, you can't, you can't create an object with an abstract class. It has to, um, inherit. And that's something that I learned from, uh, Louise in my discord group. So thank you, Louise, for that information. 
So, so, so the first thing that you should try to do when you encounter something like this is just try to inherit from this class. So we'll try that now. So we'll call this public OSC receiver listener with OSC address. And then in here, you have what's called a callback type. Okay, so there are two different ways that you can, that there are two different types of callbacks that you can do. So you have what's called a message loop callback, which basically puts this on the, so, so, you, so that would put this on the, uh, the received messages on the message thread, okay? As opposed to a real-time callback, which would put it on its own OSC thread. Um, so, so there's more information about this. I don't want to take too much time to kind of go into detail on this. So, and it shows you, and it tells you the benefits of each one of those. So what we'll do is we'll just do it on the message thread here. So this is the message loop callback. And then it says, um, that is good if it's not real time critical, but you have a lot of messages to receive. So what you would do is just going back to what I had here before, listener with OSC address. So you just put that in here under the callback type. <coughs> Pardon me. So this is uh so this is called message loop callback. Loop callback. So I believe that's right. Oh, I think I think I need to call it OSC receiver. So it should be OSC receiver message loop callback. Ah, oh, I hate when it does that. Such a pain. Hate's a strong word. I don't hate it, but I strongly dislike it. Um, okay, so now we have so now we have this. We can't move forward yet because if we look here in this listener with OSC address class we will see that we have a virtual function, a pure virtual function. And we know it's a pure virtual function because we have this equals zero. So what that means is that this will, this will not work unless we implement this class. So we have this void OSC message received. So we have to, so we have to actually type out this function here. So I'll just put it here. So I'll call it void OSC message received. Uh, const OSC message ampersand message and since it's a pure virtual function we need to say use the override keyword which is what I've gone through in my previous tutorials so this will actually tell it what to do when the OSC message is received so this actually helps you parse out the OSC messages Okay, so we're good so far. So now if we go back to our to our OSC receiver class, there are a few things that we need to do. So if you recall, basically we have we have this on our local host and then we have this on port number six four four eight. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is we need to let juice know that. Okay, so what we need is we need this function here, connect. And then we just have a port number there. So we'll just, we could just put that in the constructor here. So I will say connect. And since we're inheriting from this class, it, it knows what, it knows what we're talking about. Okay. So I could just say, uh, we're on port six, four, four, eight. And, <clears throat> and then we need this other one. We need to, we need to add this component as a listener. So what we need is, this function here, add listener, where we have the listener with OSC ad address and then the OSC address that we're looking for. So if you recall, if we go back here, we have this OSC address slash juice. Okay. So what I can say is I could say add listener. And then I think I want this one. So since this is the receiver, this component is the receiver, I can just put this as the, as the OSC receiver. And then the address to match is going to be a string. 
and that's going to be juice. Okay, so you see how I got that? Just had this this message here. Okay, so this is what I just decided. It doesn't have to be juice. It could be it could be anything, um, but I just decided to put juice there. And so so you have to let it know what address that we're that we're that we're listening for. So that's all good. Okay, so now we go down to the part that really kind of had me kind of uh, puzzled for a second, which was like uh, how to actually get these how to actually get these messages out. Okay, and I don't know that the documentation really kind of tells you uh, in the best way, you know, what what's kind of happening here. Okay, but. Um, what what's happening is that this is actually OSC message OSC message is actually an array okay and the array and the size of the array actually depends on <clears throat> the number of messages you're receiving and I'll show you and I'll show you a um, demonstration of that in a second okay so uh, another thing that it doesn't really define it gives you an error if you kind of if if you kind of uh, go through and just try to say um, uh, see out, um, you know, the, the number that we're getting on the other side, it would say that you have to check, you have to check it before you, um, before you're able to basically put the number out. So, um, and that kind of had me puzzled for a second, but luckily I looked at the OSC message, the OSC receiver example, and that helped me figure things out. So what you have to do is you have to actually put a check condition where you have to say, okay, if, I'm receiving a message if I'm receiving one message and that message is an integer then you can then you can do something with it okay so we're just going to use an if statement here so if message um, dot size is that what I want yeah so so if the size of the message is because it's because it's a it's, it's basically a vector so if message.size is equal to one, and one is the number of messages that we have coming through, so because we just have an integer that's kind of coming in here, so that's just one message, okay? So if the size of the message is one, and um, the message, the first message, so this would be the first message that you're getting in uh, via OSC on, on, on the... Um, on the vector, okay, and it's of type int. So if we look here, okay, we can see what we have, which is, is it actually in here? Hmm, I don't, doesn't look like it's actually here. Okay, hmm, interesting. Um, I'm not seeing it there, but what we need here is message is int 32, okay? Interesting that it doesn't have it there in the documentation, but um, but now you know. Uh, so 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 we're checking that the message size is one and that it's an int that's coming in. So we have to make sure that it's the correct data type. Okay. So if this was a float, then it would have to say float. Then it'd have to say is float thirty two or or if it's a string, then it is a string. Okay. Then what I can do is I could just say. I'll just make a quick variable. I'll say the message is equal to message zero. And then you can use get int 32. Okay. And that will actually get, that will actually get the actual integer that's at that, uh, at that vector index. Okay. And now I can say, I can put that out the console the message and this should work did I miss anything hopefully not um, so this takes a second to compile so yeah I'm not sure why is it under OSC receiver maybe let me look under OSC receiver no I'm not seeing it hmm that's interesting um, maybe it's inheriting. Maybe it's inheriting from a, from another. No, I don't see it. Um, wow. Hmm. That's interesting. So you can see that the numbers are now coming out the console here. So 
we can just match them and see and you see that those those are the same messages that are coming in okay so that is how that's how you receive osc messages so let's just really quickly just do another little demonstration here so i'll just add a uh, i'll add a string onto this message here so if i just put percent f for string right <clears throat> and let's see if we let's just make a condition if uh if this integer uh, if this integer is greater than 20 then stop else go All right so so if it's so if this number is greater than 20 then it should say stop or else it should say go we're just going to check that make sure that that's actually working so that's great so that's just sending some different messages here just so we can uh so we can make sure that that's working. So then I'll just put this in here. So now we have two messages that are coming, that are, that are gonna be coming in. We have an integer, we have a float. So now what we need to do is we need to go over here and we just need to actually adjust this So for our string. So the message size is now two. I got message zero is in 32 and message one is string okay then i can just say um sorry string with a capital this this i'll just call it this string equals message one get string okay and then we'll just add this on to the console out just to see if it's actually going to work here so here we go we're going to compile and let's see what happens here okay have i missed something okay i've missed something here so see if we if we have it wrong then nothing actually comes out because it hasn't met the condition. So I'm just going to try. I might have I might have um, done this wrong here. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to just try setting it in here real quick and see if that works. Oh, I've got a semicolon. Um. Okay, so let me just try that. See if that works. Okay, and that's still not working. What have I done here? Okay. Um, okay, I'm just gonna do some debugging live here on the fly. See what's happening. So, Okay, interesting. Okay, um, oh, I put it as a float rather than a string. Ah, uh, what are you doing? Okay, cool, let's try that. Let's try that now. So let me just command Z some of this and we shall try again. Oh, it worked right away actually. You can see it's working right away. So, so there we go. So now we're getting random numbers and we're getting the strings as well. So that's how that's how you parse those messages out uh, to get those to get those into juice. So that's just like a really basic way. I don't really I, I'm gonna make a confession here. I don't really know a whole lot about OSC, but um, I just wanted a, a basic way to just kind of get messages in and then just kind of funnel them out to do different things. And um, so I just thought I'd show you that. And I hope that somebody found it helpful out there. If you did, uh, give me a thumbs up or drop me a nice comment because it feels nice to hear compliments. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time.